I am the IT director here at Hargett Military Academy, and I am here sitting with Kevin Smith, class of 77, and Frank Thomas, class of... 87. 87. Cool. A lot of them have that deep connection, as we talked about, and I had a couple of cadets in here a couple nights ago that were about to tear up just talking about the connections they made, and I had one cadet sitting right here telling the other cadet here, he's like, I hope that we're friends when we're 40 and our kids are playing. And uh, it was a really, it was a really good moment. And um, I'm sure there are many here that will really appreciate what you guys are doing for the association. Well, it, it is special. We do have that bond, that brotherhood. Uh, Frank and I were talking on the way over here. I'm, I'm going to have lunch with, with one of my classmates today when, when we're through with this. Uh, so it, it's been a, 45, six year friendship. That's amazing. Yeah, it is. I think it, Hargrave has evolved since 1909, <clears throat> right? And, um, you know, it first started as a training school and then it became a, a military school in 1925. And each generation, um, Hargrave has had its own flavor. Yes. And um, a lot of things have remained the same, even from from 1950 until today, there, there are some common themes there that, and traditions that still occur at Hargrave. I think that the one thing, the, the true and one thing that every cadet gets while they're here at Hargrave, the boys that are here now, this is their Hargrave. Mm. And in the 80s when I was a cadet, that was our Hargrave, mm -hmm. right? The, the key thing, the key, the one thing that really sticks, that never changes, is exactly what you two were talking about, that bond. Mm -hmm. and, and that can't be, um, that can't be faked. It, it can't be made. It, it, it's, it's organic and special to, to Hargrave uh, for the cadets that are here now. But they experience the same things that we experienced. Yeah, yeah. Living in a dormitory together, getting up early in the morning, saluting the flag, um, walking bull ring, doing parades, uh, just learning that 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 experience and all these things together creates a family environment. Um, they're brothers. Yeah. Well, sometimes they fight. Sometimes they get along. But at, <laughs> at the end of the day. They love each other, yeah. and they appreciate yeah. that they went through the same thing together. Well, that's the skills that yeah. you don't learn, for instance, in a public school because you interact with those students during the day, and then you go back to your home environment. And these cadets are learning these soft skills, how to deal with mm -hmm. people at night, how to deal with people at all times. One of, the, one of the things we did last year, and I hope we will continue this as a, as, as a tradition, we, we gave all the graduating seniors a copy of uh, William McRaven's book, um, make your bed. Yes, yes. Make yeah. your bed. And it, and it is something so simple, so simple, but it is the best way to make your start your day. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I tell them all the time, garbage in, garbage out. Mm. You know, most people start their day by turning on their phone and they scroll. Yeah. And and that's not the way to start your day. If I, I told them to do experiments. Like I do a, an app called Hetty where I listen to book summaries in the morning. And I'll pick a book and I'll listen to it while I'm doing my coffee, getting myself ready. And uh, it sets my day really well. And the days that I don't do something positive first thing in the morning or something discipline-oriented, I can tell the difference in my entire day. And it's, it's good to see they don't appreciate it now. And you kind of you kind of have to give them a little foot in the pants to mm -hmm. get them going. But once they do, it is the most gratifying feeling to see them finally get it. Yeah, And, and that's amazing. And I'm sure that uh, a lot of the alumni that come in are so eager to tell that story and so eager to reciprocate that feeling to the cadets who don't get it yet. The alumni weekend especially to meet graduates from Hargrave and, and hear their story and it really really reinforces the mission of what we do here. Tell me about your first week at Hargrave. Oh my. <clears throat> 1972. I was 12 years old. I was uh, eighth grader. Uh, my, I had a, my older brother uh, came here for two years. And so I was excited to be here. Prior to enrollment, I had come as a visitor or as a guest. Uh, so when I would come up and visit my brother, we would you know, go to the parades. Um, 
afterwards run up on the barracks with him and just play and goof off with the guys. And I thought it was the greatest thing in the world. Uh, when I came here as an eighth grader and that first week and we're, we're, we're in the barracks, we're outside of our room, standing at attention, learning how to do that. And uh, I remember Coach Dennis Fuller was our TAC officer. And he told us to all hit the deck and uh, start doing push-ups. I had to learn how to do push-ups. <laughs> 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 so it was uh, a little disorienting at first, uh, but yet there were so many other guys right there with me uh, who were having the exact same experience. Uh, that's when that formation of the Brotherhood began. When I went out for Honor Guard, uh, that was special. That was in the that was in the tenth grade, and and that was. It was a competition. I mean, there were probably 50 of us that started out uh, competing for, what, six spots on the squad. Uh, and it was over a six-week period. And, and you know, it could be anywhere from being called out at 6 in the morning to go do calisthenics to, you know, after mess three, you know, changing from your uniform again in, into uh, gym gear, going out doing calisthenics or doing drills. Um it really created a, a discipline uh, in my mind um, and a desire, a desire to compete, a desire to win. I wanted to be on that squad, and I did. You know, you're in the Alumni Association, so you're starting to see the newer alumni come through. Right. Um, what are the biggest changes you see from just you know graduates from back then and graduates from your time? I'm asking both of you this, and, and from now, what do you think are the biggest differences or the biggest, you know, contrast to to what it was like back then frank you want to you want to take a yeah shot? i i think i can take a shot at that <laughs> um I, I i have a little bit different insight um because i've been working with the boys since i, I graduated basically i had a little mm. stint there where i wasn't here at hargrave um I don't think that all in all our our kids are are different. I think their environment's different. Yes. So when I look at young men today, um, they are they need things quickly. Mm -hmm. They need things to be explained a little in a little more in detail, and they have the the why. Now, we had the why when we were young men, too. However, I think we were a little more, um, more okay, I'll do, because everything is focused towards being self-centered. Yes, I agree. And so the, the young men, uh, when I was coaching or teaching um, in the past, they were a little more take charge on things. A little more team account accountable, whereas today young men are a little lost as far as how to put that together, mm. how to, how to take a buddy um, or a teammate and and corral them together for a purpose. It, you understand where I'm coming from? Yeah. I, so yeah, they, they they just they have it in them, and they can do it. It takes a little more guidance now. What kids these days are never alone with their own thoughts anymore. They're always bombarded with information. They're told what to think, what to do. We found joy in figuring things out. We found satisfaction in figuring things out. We found satisfaction in doing something difficult and understanding and appreciating doing a good job at things. In the day and age where we can Google everything, or we can find a video instructions on how to do everything, it kind of takes the fun and imagination out of things. You, you know, where, where you're leading my train of thought is you, you're you're individually a, a cadet. Yes. And then you're a member of a squad, and you're a member of a platoon, and you're a member of a company, and you're a member of a battalion. Yes. Each, each stage has its own responsibility, his own res individual responsibility, which feeds the group. Yes. And that and that that ties into also the the deeper bonds of mm. overcoming challenges together, and right. um, yeah, it, it creates so much. And I always say that we when we work here, we plant the trees, but we never get to stand in the shade. 
And um, but honestly, you you kind of do when the alumni come in because you get to hear those stories. Yeah. You know, my favorite thing, my favorite thing is when I'm walking through campus when alumni are here, and I'll watch them and they look at something on campus, and you see the memory in their face, and that is amazing to me. Like watching that, and um, you'll have some come in that uh. They'll just come in randomly. They'll stop by. Mm -hmm. I see them at the chapel. Mm -hmm. um, one of the funny stories was when they were arguing over who took the tip off the sword on the statue. <laughs> and, um, and someone had mentioned that that person was on campus, and they went looking for him. And I thought that was the funniest thing. They were like, where is he? And they just went out looking for the guy who, knocked the, who pulled the tarp off the statue and knocked the tip of yeah. the sword off. And it was so funny. I just, those little things are just so great, yeah. those stories. Yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. Hey, better reason to join the Alumni Association is to to put yourself in a position to where you can help these young men and help them in a way that um, shows them, builds that bridge between <clears throat> what it means to be an alumni of Hargrave. What, what does it mean when you graduate? to come back and continue the bonds that you have with your brothers that you had here. That, that is the biggest reason to join the Alumni Association. One of the, one of the joys I've had recently was attending the, the baccalaureate dinner uh, for the graduating seniors uh, back in was it late April, early May, mm -hmm. uh, and being able to have dinner uh, with the cadets, with the seniors, and just to talk, you you go into college, you you go into trade school, or you know, what are your next steps? What are you excited about? Uh, and we were able to share those things. We were able to share stories of that senior year, which is always special. Uh, so there is a bond there. Man, I mean, heck, I'm 64 years old, and I'm, I'm sitting here <laughs> you know, chatting with these guys, 17, 18 years old, and and we have a common bond. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, that's, yeah. It doesn't matter when you graduated. Yeah. When, yeah. when you graduate, you're a brother. It's priceless. And, that yeah. that right there. You cannot, you cannot replicate that in a lot of other ways. It's right. it's something that just sticks with you. And that sense of belonging is something that a lot of people long for. And it's so nice to see them have it here. Yeah. 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 It's real. Mm -hmm. It's real. Yeah. Exactly. I, I I went back into time right there. Yeah. I know. I saw your face. About. I'm like, wow. There's so much to say about Hargrave. Um, and I talked to, with the battalion commander a couple days ago. Um, you know, many of you said, remember that Colonel Beck, uh, Kevin, you didn't have the privilege to meet Colonel Beck. He was our commandant in the 80s. I you did, may have uh, met him. I, I did actually. meet him. I had yeah. met him, yes. So Col Colonel Beck was a special person. Um, he was in, he was a commandant in the 80s. And this is where I go back. Every, every generation is different. Um, but the same. Hmm. So Colonel Beck was so profound that when a cadet back in the 80s thinks of Hargrave, they don't think of the buildings or anything else. They think of Colonel Beck. And so I was speaking with um, our battalion commander who, who actually was a pallbearer for Colonel Beck uh, at, the, at the services here in the chapel. And we were standing outside um, um, after the funeral service, and we were talking about, he was asking about the alums that were, were, were present. And there, there was a good handful of us there. And uh, he goes, you know what, Hargrave isn't about the buildings. He says, this is about the relationships. Mm -hmm. I said, you nailed it on the head, buddy. Exactly, it's about the relationships. So when people look back at their time at Hargrave, they think about the relationships. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, and Hargrave has done such a good job over the years with those relationships. And that's why that brotherhood is so important. Um, that's why most alumni um, stay in touch with another person that they graduated with. Maybe not everybody. But they have their, their group. There's a core two, group. Two, three, yeah. four, five people that they really stay tight with. Mm -hmm. And um, and, and it's, just, it's, a, it's special. They don't do that with their, their college graduates. Mm. They don't do that with uh, even a company they may have worked for for a long time or whatever it may be. But to, to grow up and become a family member 
um, at Hargrave and have those relationships is special. Well, and you just yeah. nailed it. To, to live together, to grow together, to mature together. Uh, we go through that pro- I mean, I was here for five years. Uh, it was a long process. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I always find it, uh, I always find it funny in a good way that cadets who kicked and screamed and didn't want to be here and then they graduate and then they don't want to leave. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and I always like TJ makes me smile because TJ's still here. He graduated, but he's he's kind of helping out a little bit and then he's going off to a Marine Corps boot camp soon and that kid he just so much positive energy comes from him and he he's now trying to reciprocate all the lessons he learned to a lot of the guys he has rapport with who are juniors and seniors and um it always puts a smile on my face. There's one story like Man, I hope Mr. Gibson doesn't see this. If he does, it's okay. But I got a great Mr. Gibson story, okay? And one day I came down the hill, and I saw him get out of his car. I don't think he saw me. So he got out of his car, and he looked around, and he just breathed in, and he smiled. And it was such a good, cool, wholesome thing to see that even after all these years, and I know that you know, also working at the school can provide us own set of challenges, but he comes to Hargrave even after all these years and he takes a breath and he smiles and you can see the thankfulness on his face, you know, and that, that just, I mean, I'll never forget that image of him just taking it in, smiling, looking at the flag, looking at the cannon and looking at Camden is like, all right, let's go to business. And he just walks up the steps and deep level of appreciation for the hard times uh, that make you who you are. Right. And I told some cadets um, two nights ago, you know, they were talking about challenges, and I said, do you know how you make a sword? And I was like, you burn it, and you, you basically destroy that piece of metal to form that sword. Well, we, we, we talked about the statue in front of the chapel uh, momentarily. You know, I love that, because it, it, at the base it says, I was a boy. Here I became a man. Yes. And that, that's 100% true. I had a conversation a couple of days ago with uh, one of my friends um, uh, from Hargrave that lives in West Virginia. And being in the position that I'm in, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm in the best world. I get to keep in touch with a lot of alumni that were my friends as well. So mm. it's kind of cool to do that. And we were talking, I'm like, yeah, I need to come up and, and visit you guys in West Virginia. Um, just have a, a private you know, uh, not a private, but just to get a group of the guys that were, you know, alumni of Hargrave and just have dinner and, um, you know, keep, keep those relationships going. Um, I, I think are important, uh, for Hargrave. Um, you know, we do have something that is special and I think that, um, we need to keep that going. We need to make sure that our our brotherhood stays alive for a long time. Yeah. And well, what we don't want to do, we don't want to necessarily live in the past all the time. But, right. But but let's let's you know now that we are grown and adults and have had careers and and children and possibly grandchildren, um, let, let's talk about that. Let, yes. Let's share that. Let's let's share. Continue to share life together. Yes, absolutely. Do you think that, um, I don't know, like, I have a little bit of your bio here, but can you share a little bit more about your life, if that's, if that's okay? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, one of the benefits of, of being a, a playing soccer at uh, Hargrave, Coach Dennis Fuller uh, was a soccer coach all five years for me being here. Um, he helped me get a scholarship uh, to Winthrop College in Rock Hill, South Carolina, so I went to Winthrop on a full ride, uh, <clears throat> thanks to Coach Fuller. <laughs> um, college, uh, went into the family business after graduation, uh, home building and land development business, did that for the next 20 years, hmm. and uh, then then went off on my own and uh, started doing development uh, and investments on my own for the next well, to the recession, <laughs> and then I think that thing thing things changed a bit. But then uh, purchased a, a commercial general contracting firm in 2011, and uh, ran that all the way up until 2021, and then sold the company. Uh, so I've had a had a good career, good long career. Uh, two beautiful daughters. I've got two granddaughters now. 
my wife and I just celebrated 35 years of uh, oh, marriage. Uh, yeah, yeah, she's a strong woman. <laughs> it uh, it makes a world of difference having that having a strong woman, doesn't it? Yeah. I tell my wife all the time. She she's uh, she raises the kids and she allows me to work all these crazy hours. And I remind her all the time that she's part of the team because uh, all the very things she does that no one sees that allows me to come here and do all this stuff for these boys. And yeah, yeah it's, it matters. Yeah. But how the things that you learned here at Hargrave helped you in your professional life? Sure, sure. Uh, gosh, it goes back to the basic of how, you know, learning how to study. Uh, I, took, I had that book with me in college when I started college. Uh, the, the preparation, the planning, being ready. Uh, before you walk through the door, before you take the take the seat in the chair, um, the the discipline, and I say discipline in a positive way. Again, something as simple as making your bed first thing in the morning, caring how you dress, caring how you carry yourself. Be sharp. You could be humble, but be sharp, and and that's carried me through many difficult times uh, to have the confidence. Self confidence um, in in unfamiliar situations. Yeah, Hargrave taught me that. That's good. That's good. That's really good. I'll put you on the commercial. <laughs> um, How to study has always been a staple of Hargrave, uh, the reading program as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, two very important things in life, uh, particularly reading. Mm -hmm. um, comprehension. Yes. Um, the uh, it develops critical thinking as well. If you're a reader, and that's something and, we sorely really uh, need right now in this generation. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. And if you're a good reader, you could be a good writer. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I love the correlation between the two. That's true. My my dad says, uh, "Don't let your TV be bigger than your library." <laughs> <laughs> when kids discover the wonder that comes with reading books that you don't get from TV, you don't get from anywhere else and i think that introspection like you can read a book and then you can read a book years later and the book's not different you are mm -hmm. and that information just processes differently and that's the most amazing feeling that you get and to see them light up um uh, i don't know if you have you met elliot perkins yet have not he is an amazing teacher he doesn't know this but I, when i come down the hall to see frank and the uh, admissions department i mean the marketing department stuff i'll go down the hall and watch him teach sometimes and he is he has the most consistent energy when it comes to teaching kids and that's what you need is that consistency yeah. Yeah. but he he finds creative ways to make the kids feel more engaged and get excited about these topics that otherwise they would turn a nose up at right and there there like there was a kid that he needed to teach him how to read english and the kid liked playing these card games so he figured out a way to teach the kid English by playing what he already was playing. And I, and I go in there and I see that energy and it just puts a smile on my face. We do have a lot of people here that put their whole hearts into this place and, and it resonates with the cadets. They can see it. Roger Wilkes was that man for me. Uh, we, we had a uh, debate class uh, with, with Roger and uh, it's just fantastic. And it, uh, I've been in sales and sales development my entire career and... Um, a lot of that, I, I draw it right back to what we learned in Roger's class uh, and how he, he taught us how to think, how to talk, uh, how to present our subject, if you will. So, so what got you into sales? You know, I studied marketing in college, uh, so it would just seem like a, a natural uh, transition based on my studies uh, going into the, the family business. Uh, even though it was in the in construction business, uh, my my brothers were were in the field, uh, superintendents, project managers, that kind of thing, uh, and I just I knew even though I, I was a heck of a laborer, but I was not <laughs> necessarily going to be a good superintendent. Uh, so sales was a good natural fit for me. Any interesting stories you can give? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Sales is crazy. Uh. I use sales references, and you'll get this a lot. Is um, you know, I think what is this, Frank? You came around the same time I did back, right? So it's been about four years now, almost that we've been I'm, here. I'm working into my fifth year. Now. Yeah, it's something around that for me. Um, but 
I joke around with people when they compliment me and I say, you'll get this. I haven't graduated yet. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? In sales, because yeah, yeah. you get somebody who's new and they're on sale and they're in sales and they're on fire, you know, and then they graduate and then they just, they start becoming like everybody else, you know, yeah. we, 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 we talk about the, the folks who were influential. You said during the eighties, my, my influences during the seventies the were, uh, Colonel Caldwell, Major Gillespie, who was huge, huge. Uh, bless his heart, he was rough as a cob, uh, <laughs> but taught us, taught us as cadets to be strong, to be self-confident, uh, and to be disciplined, and for a purpose, for a reason, not not out of fear, but for, with a purpose. I love that. Yes, absolutely. I love the word purpose. Yeah. Um, I think that's one of the things that Hargrave provides now for young men. Um, in a society where everything is me, me, yep, individualized and instant, instant. When you come to Hargrave, I think, I think these young men, over, over time, didn't hap- happen instantly. Of course, it creates a purpose for them that they didn't know they had, and I, I think that that's the uh, probably. It, it's not something that we we at Hargrave like. There, there's no curriculum for it, other than mm. the fact of, of the that it's naturally embedded in our structure. Yes, well put. Yes, yes. So, as they become more structured, and as they become more consistent in their daily work, in their thoughts, in their activities, in your mindset, in your mindset, yes, then that purpose comes out of, hmm. You know that 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 critical thinking comes out, mm-hmm. and then they begin to to have a real purpose, and I think that that's I think that's the golden nugget uh, for for this generation of what they can get out of Hargrave. I think rank rank advancement has also been a huge drive for some of them. Mm-hmm. I, I see cadets who typically aren't motivated to do much, and they come to me and they're like, "Sir, I want to go for this rank." And I remember um, year before last, the running for BC. I had a couple of them in my jiu-jitsu club, and they were just, that's all they could think about. They were like, how do I get from here to here? And then they that effect trickled down. So there were kids who were ninth grade who were talking about, what's my path to BC? What, what do I have to do? And it was so cool seeing them that early on developing that purpose, and that was their driving factor. And I think that's something that really separates Hargrave is, is that, like you said, it's built into the structure of the school. I'll share a leadership story with you. Uh, so I was up for battalion commander during my term here. We all came back, back for officer training school. We go through that week. At the end of the week, we're all in formation. They start announcing ranks. I didn't get it. Uh, now, I did. I was uh, company commander. I was captain, uh, company commander, Bravo company. Well, all my, I mean, I had several friends close to me, and they say, oh, Kev, sorry, sorry, man, sorry. You, know, you didn't get it. You didn't get it. You deserved it. You should have been there. Well, you know, I'm drinking the Kool-Aid. Yeah, I should have been there. And I was upset. <laughs> and and, and uh, Colonel Caldwell uh, heard that I was not happy. So he called me up to the commandant's office, closed the door. He said, I understand you're upset about not getting battalion commander. I said, yes, sir. He said, well, it's because of me. He said, I was the one who didn't allow you to become company command- I mean, battalion commander. I wanted you to be company commander because you'll learn more. Now, at the time, <laughs> <laughs> hard to hear, hard to hear. Uh, but at the end of that year, you know, we had the number one company. Is uh, failing with grace and dignity. Oh. And uh, that's one thing that when you don't get what you want, learning from it and that's something that a lot of people don't get because they're in a in an age where they can always feel like a winner all they have to do is turn on something or you know they they get that fake gratification yeah you play on the team you get a trophy yeah exactly (laughs) the young men who were going up for battalion commander this time they were talking and i know them pretty well so that so talking to them afterwards they they kind of had an agreement they're like man whatever happens we put the school first it doesn't matter who gets battalion commander we're all going to take care of each other we're going to do what we need to do and the top two guys they're they're good friends and they did that and what's funny is talking to the current battalion commander he's a he's a we have good rapport we do our little coffee walks every week and we talk but he told me, he goes, you know, I didn't want it. I didn't think I was getting it. 
And he said, I just wanted to put the school first. And, and he said, I, I walked into that room and interviewed, and I was expecting to get, you know, commander of a company. I wasn't expecting to get BC. And he was like, I was prepared to do my part. And I was like, Phoenix, that's why you got the job, because you didn't want it. Those are the best leaders. Yeah. Um, and, and I really, that was a really heartwarming story, and he tells it much better than me. But the fact that those guys looked at each other and said, no matter what happens, we put this mission first. And, and that's, like you said, something that Hargrave has is very special. Mm -hmm. And it's something that it's very difficult to replicate anywhere else. I think the Commandant has that conversation every year with the guy that didn't get Mm -hmm. battalion commander yes and working in the military department at one time i understand more why some guys don't get to be battalion commander and it's kind of like your case on the military side perspective you want to have a strong you want to have strong company commanders mm. that company commander position is probably more important than the battalion commander position in a sense, because you could have a great battalion commander and a bad, bad company commander, and if you don't have a good company leadership, a lot more can go wrong. You ruin the experience for the whole barracks. Sure. Yeah. 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 And yeah. if you have a, a a not so good battalion commander but strong company commanders, it it will shadow and hide any mm -hmm. any weak leadership as far as battalion commanders. Well, you were a company commander, so I think you can understand this the best, is that you learn those skills to where when you're out in the working world and everyone else is freaking out over a problem, you just move them out of the way and get it done? Right. Or you know who, you know the soft skills to get people to do what they need to do. And I think that's one of the best things about being a company commander is you start to develop those really right. crucial skills. Uh, because like management is getting things done through the efforts of others. You learn leadership. You learn delegation. Uh, you, well, again, you know you know how to lead others uh, in order to accomplish not only your goals but the whole the the the, the corporate goal. If yes, you sir. Will. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Um, learning to reach, uh, I think that you get this huge diverse uh, group of of young men, and you get to learn the way to approach personality types. Right, and that is such a crucial skill. One of the things I've never veered away from is leadership positions. Um, I've I've walked towards it versus away from it uh, and embraced it, um, and that's because of the the lessons that I've learned here. So it's 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 Giving Tuesday. Uh, we want to encourage you to join the alumni association. Uh, again, minimum of a fifty dollar contribution, please, and uh, join the alumni association. Stay in touch with the school. Stay in touch with your fellow alums. And, uh, and support Hargrave. And we thank you. Absolutely. A, a big thank you. A big thank you uh, for all those that, that help out with um, the school and, and, and particularly the cadets. And Frank, where can we reach you if we have questions? I'm going to put your email under your name. Sure. You can reach me at frank.thomas at hargrave.edu. Harass him. Send him lots of spam. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs>